Uh, fresh back from very nearly a couple of times, I thought, beating Oklahoma. Uh, it was man, it was fun to listen to on the radio. Not because of Corey, he sucks, but the game was fantastic. <laughs> uh, and Lewis Amistoy's uh, uh, joining us as well. Good morning, Lewis. Good morning. How are you guys? We're well, sir. Coach Barnes, you know one of the uh, things that uh, I heard yesterday uh, on a national radio show was that if you look at Oklahoma's uh, run through to the Final Four, that their most difficult game was game number one against Cal State Bakersfield, and and. Um, you know, it wasn't the result you guys wanted. I know you wanted to win that game. I know you thought you could win that game too, but to see how Oklahoma has has uh, persevered, and I think the other thing too is that Buddy Hill had his worst game uh, in the tournament uh, against uh, against you guys. I yeah, mean, what does true. that say about this program right now? Well, I think we we've proven that we're at another level. I think yeah. that's the biggest thing that you know we've really worked really hard trying to take the steps that we needed to take, and I think it proved that. We're at another place than where we were five years ago, even two years ago. So we're excited about that and obviously proud of our kids. And But obviously, as you say, I sit here today um, celebrating our season, but that last game thinking just what if, you know, what yeah. if we could have got through that, How, what kind of run it would have been. But I've got to give Oklahoma credit. They did what they needed to do to win. Did you have any words with Lon Kruger after that game? What did, what did he say to you? Well, he just told me afterwards, he said, hey, guys, be honest with you guys, I played us. You know, I just got a player that's a national player of the year coach, but unbelievable job, and you should be proud of your right. kids. Yeah. And not only do they have Buddy Heald, but that, you know they also have you know some great lineage there with uh, I'm trying to remember the center's name, who was uh, his grandfather was on the Utah right, team. Yeah, yeah, Latin, yeah, David Latin's kids. grandson, yeah, sure right? Exactly. I mean, great a great lineage and a great history there. Well, they do. The thing is that I've been telling everyone that I've been talking to. The thing that concerns me the most when we was. When they came up with their veteran team, they mm -hmm. have been together, you know, three years, all of them have been together. Yeah. And their backcourt has been together for four years. So you're looking at a team with a lot of experience, a lot of time, a lot of mileage together, and they're not going to beat themselves. They're going to get the ball where they need to do. They're going to make the defensive stops they needed to make. And that was my biggest concern going into the game that I knew our pressure, I knew our defense would be good. But I knew they were not going to go away, and we were going to have to make all of the plays we could. And we did that for about 37 minutes. And uh, just unfortunately, they've got the national player of the year, and he made the plays they needed to make. You know, and, and you look now at what um, Buddy Hield has accomplished in the, through, the, through going into the Final Four. I mean, clearly sort of cementing his credentials as a, a player of the year. And Arrington did a, such a tremendous job on him, too. Well, I he mean. did. And there's, no, there's no question about that. We still talk about it. We had maybe got a couple of those push-offs there. Yeah. Uh, maybe would have slowed him down a little bit. But we knew that was one of his favorite moves to kind of get to the paint, kind of give us push-off and step-back move is what they call it right now. But I thought our kids did a great job, you know. And I think still if we had or could have had Jalen there the last two or three minutes, maybe when they hit some of the shots right. there at the end. But – uh, it was a great effort, um, you know, a great game plan. I thought our coaches did a great job. I thought our kids handled it well. Yeah. I mean, we had every reason the first time in the history of the school to go there and, you know, seem like the lights or the stage would have been too big for us. But I, I felt like our program and our kids, and I thought we felt like we was in a place that we needed to be and what we were supposed to be, and we had earned it and deserved it. So uh, I think that's the step that's the most important to me because I kept looking at – Hey, one of these points here, you know, hey, the guys may show up and not perform at the level we think they could, and it just didn't happen. Now, um, are you going to Houston for the Final Four? I am. Actually, I leave on Thursday. I'll be there uh, um, all weekend. and got a busy weekend. Got a lot of shows and interviews that, you know, you, I mean, obviously the team that we played in the Final Four, and it's just like you say, a lot of people want to know, hey, what did you guys do against our buddy, and what, what can you do to help uh, – I mean, that you got to do to beat OU and right. things like that. So it's a full weekend, a packed weekend, but, you know, one I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of coaches and friends of mine. I remember asking you this, too, you know, the, the, the way that the major college programs have worked the last few years is a lot of one-and-dones. I mean, Kentucky's right. built off of that. Yep. Um, Duke has had that same issue, too. Yep. But you've been able to keep a team together for four years. You know, it's a veteran team. It's more mature. Uh, and then you made the point, too, it's like uh, – when you face Oklahoma, you were facing, like you said, a backcourt that was together yeah. for four years. Do you kind of root for them a little bit, too, as you as, as they make their way through this thing? Well, they do. I told our, our guys, you know, even when we got the pick, when, you know, when it was popped up, I said, man, this is a great opportunity for our program because I thought they were one of the top four or five teams 
in the in the country this year. And I said, hey, if we win this game, they'll be talking about it forever. We will be the Cinderella. But also, if we happen to lose the game, which fortunately we did, uh, they're going to be talking about us all the way to the Final Four. Right. And that's what has happened to us to give us that national exposure and recognition uh, that we we want and we needed and we deserved it. And that's that's a huge for our program to. You know, just to have our kids on that stage and have our program where it is now, being so young, being right. Division One, and also a first time in the tournament. So it's kind of the perfect storm, if that's what you, you talk about at this particular point in our program. You talked a lot about defense. Um, and in the era of AAU basketball, I mean, it seems like defense was sort of – seems like fundamental basketball has been a, sort of a lost art, yeah. which I think is why so many European players have done well, you know, moving on to the NBA and things right. like that. Do you, do you think that now that is starting to change? Can you, can you convince a kid to come to Bakersfield and say, look, we're going to play hard-nosed defense, we're going to work on fundamentals, uh, this, is, this is a team game here. How do you, how do you recruit for that? Well, I think you got to find those kids. It's, it's, you know, I had a meeting with our guys yesterday, and I said, "This is a, you know, we're building something special here, and it, just not every kid can come here and play. You yeah. know, not every kid fits what we do, and you got to be. I, if you think about this, years ago, twenty years ago, maybe even longer than that, Bob and I ran motion offense, and they would pass the ball, pass the ball around, and people kept saying, "Man, why would you go play for Bob and I? It's because they win, right? You know, and he's a great coach, and you know, you've just got to." And he, what he did was he's recruited kids to fit his system. And that's what we've been able to do here recently. And I, I kept saying, and not that I want to just say, I keep saying I'm saying things, but I, I talked to our administration and I said, once we get in a league and I can figure out who's the target, you know, independent, right. you got all over the board. If I can figure out who, what we need to do to win, uh, we'll be able to win here in Bakersfield. And I think that's the thing that we'll attract. We've got a bunch of kids now that are entered in, in our program that we've been recruiting and, you know, we feel really good about where we are. We've got more California, Southern California kids that are interested in our program. Because you said the defense is something, but kids like to press. They like to get up and down. We're doing that more. And as we get better and more talented players, it's easy to convince them right. to come and play. You, you've had a great history of recruiting the South and Texas and the yeah. junior college ranks. I mean, is that going to be your continued strategy, or are you starting to now look at Southern California again? No, we did that. I mean, I, I you know – the, 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 we did what we needed to do to get us to where we are. I right. mean, obviously, we're going to recruit more high school kids because that's what you want. You want kids, as is Oklahoma, you want them in your program. But there was so many much we had to do for us, infrastructure. You know, we didn't have a name. So we had to get to the point where we could compete, right. you know, that we could play and, and our fans would come see us or people would schedule us just to compete. You right. know, we beat Cal last year. The year before that, we played USC well. The year before that, we played Washington State well. Well, if you compete, then kids start thinking you're a little bit closer. Right. You know, I've got a bunch of kids, three or four kids right now. We recruited in the fall, and I kept telling them this is going to be a great season. And they passed on us. Yeah. And now they're calling me back and saying, Coach, you were right. You guys can do that. Right. Well, that's the kind of thing that happens when you get junior college kids. Obviously, I think we'll always recruit junior college kids because you do that at this level because sometimes you have those gaps in there. Right. You know, but the thing is, you don't want to just live with all junior college kids and transfer as kids. Uh, and I told our kids and administration, everyone early on, we've got to establish and kind of build a program. And then when you get there, you start putting those lasting pieces. You, you recruit a kid like Brent Rapp that's going to be with you for four years. Recruit a kid like Damian. Durham, but you can't get those kids when you first try and establish a program because people say, where is Bakersfield? Who is Bakersfield? You don't even have a league, Coach. Yeah. How can you convince me to come? Because every kid wants to do what we did this year. They want to play in the NCAA tournament. Absolutely, and they and they got a chance to see that. And, you know, the, uh, the dramatic, uh, you know, Basil's winning shot mm -hmm. uh, has been, you know, seen so many times. Uh, in fact, uh, Zach's doing – Illegal video of it uh, nice. from the press from press row has yeah. like fifty thousand yeah. views on Twitter. Yeah. So right. I, I wanted to ask uh, real quickly, Coach, what do you anticipate for next year's schedule about who you might end up uh, uh, with uh, on, on the schedule? Now that now that things have kind of gotten bumped up a little bit, are right. there some teams that maybe you've tried to get uh, on your schedule that may entertain the idea now of playing Cal State Bakersfield? Well, that, that's starting to happen. What you what you get you get two things right now. First of all, they look at your roster and they see we. We've got 10 of our 12 guys back. 
Yeah. So a lot of people don't want to, you know, they look and say, you played Oklahoma last year and you got all these guys back, even though we're losing two of our best players. But they know, as Lewis just, I just got to speak, our backcourt is back. All of our guys on the perimeter are back. And people know guards win at this right. level. So they're not just hopping on board. Uh, we're getting more interest from tournaments where there's bigger teams in it, you know, playing multiple teams on night after night than we are just – regular teams uh you know we picked up Santa Barbara we'll be playing them next year we've been trying to do that for four or five years and it just right. hasn't worked uh, we got Fresno coming here which is a good you know game for us uh we're in the talks of going back to Hawaii and playing again and we got some games we got to return like we got to go back to Delaware because they came here and we got to go back to Dartmouth so we're not quite finished with our schedule but we're close but down the road, what I'm saying that, you know, two years from now, we go to a great Alaska shootout. Those are the things that are starting to happen for us. They're trying to get us to Cancun tournament next year. So we got some things that are building to saying that our program where they normally wouldn't invite us, that now they're starting to invite us because they know uh, either we'll win in the tournament or we'll be a good RPI team. And they're not losing to someone that you would say, who is that? I, I, Hold look on, at, we, we, we got to take a break before right. you do that. Look at the clock. All look right. at it. Well, you guys, you guys, it. there's a tournament in Cancun. Yes. You need an equipment manager, somebody to carry stuff <laughs> down there, and just uh, a press aide to somebody. To, I'll just carry Corey's stuff. I'll make sure <laughs> stuff's all working properly. We'll be right back. More with uh, Coach Rod Barnes.